Thank you for the um, introduction. So, uh, hello everyone, I'm June, and this is uh, joint work with Satinder, Hongnak, Ep, and Pushmit. So in this work, we were interested in zero-shot test generalization problem. So suppose that we want to train a household robot to, to execute a given list of instructions like this figure, then it is infeasible to train this robot to do every possible combinations of the instructions. So we want to train the agent on a small set of tasks such that it can generalize over a much larger set of tasks without any additional training procedure. So to do this, we assume a multitask setting where the agent has to perform many different tasks depending on the given task description, and it has to generalize over unseen task descriptions during evaluation. And here, the form of the task description is important because um, it defines the task space, and in our work, we consider two types of task descriptions. The first one is uh, categorical parameters, and the second one is sequential instructions. So I'm gonna first talk about these parameterized tasks. So in the parameterized tasks, a task is described by several categorical parameters. For example, in this figure, the first parameter is pickup and the second parameter is A, and the agent has to pick up the object A in order to finish this task. So the important thing here is that only a subset of parameterized tasks is, of, is available to the agent during training, and the agent has to um, deal with unseen combinations of them during evaluation. So there can be many different like generalization scenarios, and this is one simple generalization scenario where the agent is trained on two tasks, pick up box and throw ball, and we give unseen combinations of them during evaluation, like uh, pick up ball in this example. So in order to generalize over this, the agent has to assume that the semantics of each parameter are consistent regardless of the other parameters, which means that the agent has to pick up the ball as it pick up the box, uh, because the semantics of pickup are same as before. And this is the most like straightforward generalization scenario, but this is not always the case in the real world applications. For example, we can have this kind of a more complex generalization scenario where like given interact with apple, the agent has to eat the apple, and given interact with ball, the agent has to throw the ball. So in this case, the semantics of interact can be different depending on the target object. So if we give a new target object during evaluation like chips, then it, it's impossible for the agent to generalize over these uh, unseen combinations without any knowledge about this um, new task, interact with chips. However, if someone says like interact with chips as you interact with Apple, then humans can easily generalize over this because humans can easily understand this analogy and then we can perform like pick up interact with chips as we do it for like Apple. So we wanna teach the agent with this kind of analogy because analogy allows the agent to perform new tasks in a zero shot way without really having to train this agent on these new tasks in reinforcement learning setup. So to do this, we proposed an architecture called parameterized skier, which is a deep neural network. Um, this network takes uh, these parameters as additional input and it maps these task parameters to the task embedding space. And this is combined with the observation and the architecture produces an action and the binary value, which uh, predicts whether the given task is finished or not. So we train this architecture using the user actor critic um, objective for the action and the binary classification objective for the binary prediction. But the most important component is this task embedding because this has to deal with unseen combinations of the task parameters. So to do this, we, in order to like inject some knowledge about the tasks, we proposed an analogy making objective, which I'm going to describe later. And this whole network is trained end-to-end -end using these three objectives. The key idea of this analogy making is to learn the correspondences between similar tasks and learn the differences between different tasks. For example, if we have like four similar tasks like visit A, B, and pick up A, B in this figure, we can think about some relationships between these tasks. For example, the difference between visit A and pick up A 
should be identical to the difference between visit B and pick up B because they represent the difference between visit and pick up task. And we can apply the same logic to the difference between object A and B. So if the task embedding space can satisfy this kind of relationship in the embedding space, then it can map some unseen combinations of the parameters like pick up B in this example to a reasonable point into the embedding space such that the agent can actually solve that task without having to experience the, such tasks beforehand. So in order to implement this idea, we define several constraints in the embedding space. Like for example, the first constraint says that like if we have these four different tasks that satisfy this analogy, then we perform vector addition and subtraction in the embedding space to enforce this kind of analogy. And this is similar to word to vec uh, formulation. And the other two constraints uh, encourage the network to learn the differences between different tasks. So to satisfy these constraints, we, uh, we propose some objectives based on contrastive loss. And we demonstrate, demonstrated this idea on a 3D environment where the agent can interact with many different types of objects. And the action space consists of the user mov movement actions and some special actions like pick up and transform for interaction with these objects. And this video shows um, our agent's play on this parameterized task. The left is the observation and the figure in the middle is, is the just the top-down view image. And the agent has to perform different tasks depending on the given task parameters and it has to predict when the task is finished. So given visit pick, the agent looks for the pick and then goes on top of that to finish this task. And these are some different examples. And the next video shows generalization to unseen combinations of these parameters. Like for example, um, in this video, this particular combination of pickup horse was never presented to the agent during training, but our agent can understand the meaning of this task and solve this task without, uh, in, in a zero shot way. And this is a more complicated generalization scenario where the agent has to either transform or pick up the target object given the same task, which is interact, and to do this, we divided these objects into two groups, group A and group B. And group A should be transformed and group B should be picked up. And we defined analogies based on the group of the objects. And it turns out that our agent can successfully generalize over unseen target objects during evaluation using these analogies. So it um, correctly either transforms the target or pick up the target depending on the type of the object. So in the final video, we added one more parameter, which is a number, and the agent has to repeat the same task for the given number of times and then predict when this task is finished. And during training, we gave only a subset of numbers like one, three, and five, and then during evaluation, we gave unseen numbers like two, four, six, seven, and then we found that this agent can successfully generalize over unseen numbers by repeating the same task for the given number of times, even though it, it has never seen such numbers during training. So to do this, we defined analogies based on some, some arithmetic, like for, for example, one, one to three is same as two to four or something like that. And this table summarizes the result. Um, we evaluated this agent on three different generalization scenarios and we found that this analogy making objective is crucial for generalization to unseen task parameters. So, so far I have talked about how to uh, generalize over unseen task parameterized tasks and now we consider sequential instructions. So in this problem, the agent has to um, execute a given sequence of natural language instructions like visit P, pick up three sheets, and so on. And the agent also has to handle unexpected events like some unexpected bonus or unexpected like emergency situation. And we assume that a pre-trained parameterized gear, which I just described in the first part of my talk, is available to the agent, which means that the agent can choose high levels of tasks instead of uh, choosing primitive actions, which makes the problem a little bit uh, simpler. 
So more specifically, the agent can read one instruction at a time by managing a pointer over the location of the instructions. And the agent can, has some external action that can move this pointer to the next instruction. And the agent has to learn when to, when to move on to the next, next instruction by, by detecting when the current instruction is finished. And we have this uh, randomly appearing treasure box, which gives a large bonus reward. And the agent, it's sometimes better for the agent to um, deal with this kind of un, a randomly appearing box in order to maximize the reward. And because of this uh, randomly appearing box, the agent sometimes has to interrupt ongoing subtasks before termination. And also there are some special instructions like pick of three picks, which require the agent to keep track of its progress in order to um, precisely detect when such instructions are finished and then move on to the next instruction. So to solve this problem, we trained a metacontroller on top of the parameterized gear. So the metacontroller reads the instructions and then it passes some subtask parameters to the parameterized gear. And the parameterized gear is pre-trained to execute the given subtask and it gives a termination signal back to the metacontroller. And this parameterized gear is again trained to generalize over unseen compositions of the parameters. So if the metacontroller has this kind of high level skills, so the, meta, the action space for the metacontroller is really like a high level subtask, then it's natural to consider an open loop metacontroller which updates the subtask only when the current one is finished, only when the previous one is finished. So this is good because the agent can now operate at a larger time scale by using these temporal abstractions. But the bad thing is that it cannot handle unexpected events because like, even if the agent sees such events, it cannot immediately change the subtask before termination. So on the other hand, we can think of a um, closed loop metacontroller which updates the subtask at every step. So this can handle unexpected events in principle, but the problem is um, the overall decision problem becomes more difficult because now the agent has to make a decision at every time step. So to take the advantage of both approaches, we uh, propose the metacontroller which can learn when to update the subtask. So the idea is to make a binary decision at every time step, whether to update the subtask or not. And if the agent decides not to update the subtask, then it simply copies the, the previous subtask to the current one, and it simply copies its uh, previous internal state, like LSTM state of the agent, to the current one without changing anything. And if the agent decides to update the subtask, then yeah, we just perform the normal forward propagation to update the subtask task and the internal state of the agent. So this allows the agent to um, operate at a larger time scale based on this learned binary decision. And also the agent can handle unexpected events if it learned to uh, update the subtask at the right moment. So this video uh, shows our agents play on training instructions. So during training, we gave like four instructions, like pick up two pig and tra transform three cats, like in this example. And given transform three cats, the agent has to remember how many cats have been transformed in order to um, correctly move on to the next instruction at the right moment. And we also found that the, whenever the agent sees a box, the agent learned to immediately handle such boxes to um, to get a large bonus reward. And during this process, the agent doesn't forget about how many cats have been transformed and then it moves on to the next instruction precisely when uh, the current one is finished. And since the agent was trained to execute these instructions sequentially, it can, it can easily generalize over longer instructions during evaluation. And at the same time, the agent, whenever the agent sees this kind of box, it, it can still deal with these kind of boxes. And also since the, the parameterized gear was trained to generalize over unseen compositions of the subtask parameters, the agent can also handle unseen instructions during, during evaluation. So as a result, um, our, our agent was trained on short instructions and evaluated on longer and unseen instructions. And we found that like our approach of like 
updating by, by our approach of like learning to update the subtask outperforms both like open loop and closed loop baselines. And it can also generalize where to longer and unseen instructions during evaluation. So in this work, we explore the zero shot task generalization problem in two particular types of um, task descriptions. One is parameterized task and the other one is sequential instructions. And we saw that it is possible to teach new tasks very easily using analogies, uh, using metric learning and deep, deep learning. And also we saw that learning when to update subtasks is useful when the agent has some high level skills and it has to deal with some complex decision problem. And as a future work, I think exploring richer task descriptions like programming language and generalizing over unseen programs would be an interesting direction. And also building an end-to-end -end hierarchical system that can discover some disentangled subtask parameters and then generalize over them would be an important future direction. And thank you very much. Hey, uh, question time. Um, thank you very much, really impressive talk. So can you introduce a bit more about the richer task descriptions, like um, beyond the sequential tasks? Yeah, um, yeah, so our, like in, in this work, like we, the sequential instructions are quite limited in the sense that like the agent has to execute these instructions strictly sequentially. But we can think of a more like richer descriptions, like for example, um, some tree structured programming language. For example, like it can specify, for example, if then else statement, or it can specify some loop or recursion. So that can provide more like uh, richer descriptions, which can allow the agent to perform much larger set of tasks by, by just following this program, programming language. Yeah. Can I ask a follow up question? Yeah. So in, the, in, the, in your talk, you mentioned that um, when trained by interaction with an existing object and given a new testing object that is never shown before, mm -hmm. they can learn from previous interaction. Yeah. So what if the uh, new interaction, the action is not like in your action set? Would that happen? So I think in, this, in that case, if the action required for generalization has never used during training, then there's no way for the agent to generalize over them in, in our framework. So yeah, but exploring that kind of problem would be also interesting. I see, thank you yeah. so much. Thanks. So, uh, we can have time for one quick question while we switch machine. Uh, so um, since you're embedding your tasks, mm -hmm. um, do you know if it's possible to interpret what you learn, meaning um, do some dimensions relate to the position of the of the reward or can you interpret any of the dimensions of the embeddings that you uh, learn? We haven't really looked at, we haven't tried to interpret the learned task embedding space, but I guess like since we trained the embedding space based on the analogies, then I expect that it can some form some sort of manifold in the embedding space such that it can capture this parallelism structure for, for uh, similar tasks. But yeah, but we haven't looked at it. Actually, All right, yeah. thanks. Okay, so let's thank the speaker again.